All right, Vernon, Vernon, Vernon. We are nearly there, nearly there. Just a little nick. Ah, got it. Now, Vernon, you, my friend, are going to be okay. Oh, hi, everyone. Welcome to the Story Emporium Repair Shop. And I've just been doing a little bit of repairs for Vernon. Thank you very much indeed. We'll just have to get this back. Vernon has been dredging ditches again, and he has swallowed a bedstead, a Morrison's trolley, and a 30-gallon drum of quinoa. But now he's fine, absolutely fine but he needs a bit of recovery. So, Cecil, I want you to play with Vernon because what we need to do is get his spirits up, okay? So you and Vernon have a nice play. Cecil? Cecil, are you going to play with Vernon? Cecil, what's the matter? Oh, Cecil! Vernon's okay. I know what happened, but that was a couple of months ago. He, he's fine now. But are you just shy? Oh, Cecil. Well, it's true, everybody. Everybody gets shy sometime or other in their lives. Oh, Cecil. I know a story about someone who got shy. Shall I tell you that story? <gasps> Brilliant. Okay, Vernon, do you want to hear the story? Femi? Femi's at the back. Do you want to hear the story? Right, we'll have the story. Oh, he's ringing the bell. Easy, Dennis, easy. Now then, the story is for you, Cecil, and for you, Femi, and for you, Vernon. Vernon's not his real name. Once upon a time, there was a boy called Brian, and Brian had been to many schools in his young life, and he'd only stayed, what, maybe two weeks at any school. But now he was going to school, and his mum was determined she wouldn't move again. But Brian was very shy. And when he went into the classroom, Miss said, All right, children, we've got a new boy called Brian. We're a very lucky class. Who's going to play with Brian at break time? Everybody put their hands up. But when they tried to play with Brian, Brian was too shy to play with anyone. And so poor Brian, he didn't play with anyone. And I know what being shy is like. It's like looking through the windows at all the other children playing and not being able to go out and join them because it's just a little bit too scary. Well, after three weeks, the teacher got very worried about Brian and Brian still had no friends. One playtime, he was next to the boys' toilets and he was pushing himself into the wall. He wanted to disappear when he saw three other children playing. One of the children, her name was Femi. And Femi said, well, guess what? Well, guess what? You know my dad, yeah. You know my dad, yeah. My dad's postman. My dad's delivered a letter to the Queen. And the other two children, Vernon, said, yes. And Cecil said, yes. And then Vernon said, well, guess what? You know my mum. My mum is a lobby driver. And my mum has driven all the way to Scotland. Whoa, said the others. And my mum has driven all the way to Germany. Whoa, said Femi. Whoa, said Cecil. And then it was Cecil's turn. It was your turn. And Cecil said, well, guess what? My dad's a DJ. Whoa, said Vernon. Whoa, said Femi. 
poor Brian. He was looking at the three children. He wanted to be friends with them, like they were friends with each other. But he didn't know what his dad did, because he'd never even seen his dad. So he decided to make something up. He left the wall of the boys' toilets. He went up to them and he said, Well, guess what? You know, my dad, yeah. Well, my dad plays football for Manchester United. Whoa, said Vernon. Whoa, said Femi. Whoa, said Cecil. And so the four children, Brian, Femi, Cecil, and Vernon ran around the playground chasing each other. But then Femi said, Hold on, Brian. If your dad plays for Manchester United, how come you still live in the Red Flats? And then Vernon said, Hey, Brian, if your dad plays for Manchester United, they're all billionaires. How come you haven't got a car? And then Cecil, even Cecil said, Hey, hey, Brian, if your dad plays football for Manchester United, how come your mum still picks you up from school? Brian knew. They knew. They knew. They lied. And so Brian, he turned and he ran into the boys' toilets and he never came out till the bell. And then during lunch play, he went to the boys' toilets and he never came out. And at the end of the day, when his mum come, Brian took his mum's finger and said, Come on, mum, we've got to go. Brian, what are you doing dragging me? And behind Brian, Cecil was walking with his mum. And Cecil was saying to his mum, Na, 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 Manchester United. <gasps> Brian filled up with red again and pulled his mum. Come on, mum, let's go home. And when they got home, Mum said, Brian, are you sad? Yes, said Brian, I'm really sad. Did you have a good day at school? No. But why, Brian, why? I didn't have a good day at school because I lied. What did you say? I said my dad played for Manchester United. Oh, Brian, said Mum, that's not telling a lie. That's making stuff up. Lots of people make stuff up. Don't worry about that. Anyway, why did you tell everybody your dad plays for Manchester United? Who brings you swimming every Thursday? You do, Mum. And who gives you a special treat on a Friday night? You do, Mum. And who gives you your special story every night? You do, Mum. Well, Brian, which would you rather? Swimming, special treat on a Friday, or your special story every night, or Manchester United? Now, Brian, he didn't want to lie, so he looked at his mum and he said, Manchester United. Oh, Brian, get into bed after brushing your teeth. I'm going to tell you your special story. Now, this is the story that Brian's mum told him every single night. He got into the bed. He pulled up the blanket to his chin, and she began. Once upon a time, there was a boy. His name was Brian the Brave, and he was the bravest in the kingdom. And one day, the king said to him, Brian... There's a dragon up in the mountains. The dragon lives in a cave. And I want you to go to the dragon and kill the dragon. I will, said Brian, because he was brave. So he went up to the mountain and he smelled all of the mountain. And it smelled like burnt things. It smelled like sulfur. And the closer he got to the cave, there was not a thing living. He found his sword, the sword his dad gave him. He took out his sword, shing, and he looked into the cave. 
and inside the cave he saw two big yellow eyes looking and the dragon came out brian braced himself but then he saw that rolling down from the dragon's eyes were two massive teardrops and they fell on the floor brian said what's the matter with you and the dragon said I'm sad because I haven't got no mum and dad and I haven't got any friends. Well, Brian the Brave put away his dad's sword and said, Well, guess what, yeah? I'll be your friend. And the dragon said, Will you? And Brian said, OK. And they started to play. Now, when dragons play, they can be great fun. And Brian, well, he climbed up the dragon's back and he slid down the dragon's back like it was a slide. Wee, wee. And after a while, the dragon said, hey, Brian, do you want to fly on my back? And Brian said, yeah, yeah, I do. Well, get on my back, Brian. So Brian got onto the dragon's back. I know what. Femi, will you be the dragon? Come down here. You can be the dragon, and I'm going to ask Vernon, not his real name, to be Brian. And come and be Brian, Vernon. Brian got onto the dragon's back. Oh, 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 oh. And then the dragon began to flap his wings, flap, flap. Flap, 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 and the dust came up. And Brian said, hey, dragon, why haven't we taken off? And the dragon said, we have taken off, Brian. Look down. And when the dust cleared, Brian looked down and he could see the whole city. And he said, look. There's my house. Look, there's my school. Look, there's my... Well, by that time, the real Brian was always fast asleep. Well, Brian went into school the next day and it was just a normal day, except Miss said, well, after break, everybody, we're going to have a special visitor. Oh, is it going to be policeman? said Femi. No, it's not going to be a policeman. Is it going to be a fireman? said Vernon. No, unfortunately, it's not going to be a fireman. Is it going to be the head teacher? said Cecil. Again? No, it's not going to be the head teacher, Cecil. Go out and have a nice play, and when you come in, you'll find out. Well, all during the play, all the children were talking about the special visitor, trying to guess who it was. And when they came in again, arms crossed, legs folded on the carpet, Miss said, here she is. The door opened. They all looked behind them. And Brian looked back. It was Brian's mum. And Brian said, what's she doing here? Brian's mum came to the front. Brian's mum sat in the storytelling chair. And Brian's mum said, everyone, I'm going to tell you a story. It's a special story. It's called Brian the Brave. She's going to tell my story, said Brian. Well, Mum did. She told the story. And Brian, who'd heard it so many times before, looked around, looked at Femi, looked at Vernon, looked at Cecil. And everybody was looking at Brian's mum like this. And afterwards, they said, Brian, Brian, is it true? Did you go on a dragon's back? 
well, Brian, he didn't want to lie, and he said, no, no, I, I, I didn't. It's just a story. And Cecil said, whoa, Brian's in a story. Well, at the end of playtime, Mum and Brian were walking home, and Cecil was walking with his mum, and Cecil was saying, na, 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 guess what? Brian's in a story. Brian heard this, and his face didn't fill up with red. Instead, his chest went out, his head was held high, and he walked home with his mum, very proud, and not shy in them anymore, because Brian was in a story. Now, my dear friends, my dear Femi, my dear Vernon, my dear Cecil, that is the end of the story. Now, my friends, you know what to learn from that, Cecil? That dragons, like Vernon, not his real name, are not scary, okay? And I want you, and you, Vernon, and you, Femi, to play well together. Listen, everybody, we've got to go now. I've got to luck up and let them all play with all the things in the Story Emporium repair shop. So, goodbye. Come back again. Good boy, Cecil. Good boy. <laughs>